Good morning. Good afternoon. Good. Good day to you all. Uh, I think it was about 15 minutes into the first talk this morning that I came to the realization that I'm here today as a student, not an expert. And I hope you'll give me that little bit of give because I'm in a learning mode. Uh, and a lot of what I'm going to tell you is stuff that I'm learning now as well. The Colorado Trust is in transition towards a health equity vision. And uh, we are not an organization that has matured and arrived, but I'll tell you where we are. I do want to talk a little bit about um, the, uh, the place we came from, though. And then give you an actual tool that I thought, again, you're, I need to go all the way to the beginning. So um, <clears throat> we were asked to talk about frameworks and frameworks that we have experience with. And I like to tell you, the way I look at frameworks is there are ways of organizing our work that fit into that strategy phase that Marshall was talking about. Um, <clears throat> a lot of our frameworks are built observationally, so we see something that happened. And you, and you heard a lot of, about movements earlier. Uh, today, just enumerating movements through the United States history, and you apply different frameworks from an observational standpoint, and you can organize your work, hopefully in a way that will move you forward. So all I have today are four frameworks. And I'm going to spend most of the time on public will building because that may be a new framework for you, and it's one that the trust has some experience with. But I'm going to bracket it with some other uh, frameworks that uh, I think are demonstrative as well. So the, the community wealth partners put together an observational set of insights. This isn't a roadmap of how to be successful in social movements. This is an observational group of insights that they said these seem to be associated with organizations that are successful in creating social change. And I'm not going to go through the whole list, but I want to point out just a couple uh, from this morning. Look at three and four, create shared leadership and open your circle. Those are two that we heard a lot about, but not with those phrases. And shared leadership means you have to have other leaders there with you, and you have to have the humility to recognize that you're not the leader. You're a member of a group, and that humility is really important. And open your circle says beyond leaders, there are lots of stakeholders. And we need to work with everyone we can who is interested in trying to reach the goal of either population health or health equity. So those are just the things. But then I want to spend a lot of time on number five around communications, because that's what public will building is. It's a communication strategy. So the Metropolitan Group, again, built a framework based on observation of things like the environmental movement, the tobacco movement, the gay marriage movement, a lot of, uh, of other activities. And they built it into phases that we're trying to purposefully put together from a communication standpoint. So here are the five uh, phases. I recognize and I apologize my slides aren't in your set, but if you go to our website, we actually have a publication that's listed on the bottom that can take you through this from a health standpoint. But let's start with uh, framing the problem. So we need to know where we're standing, and we need to know the causes of the problem. And, and, and the great news is many of the people in the room have done this work for us. So moving from, you know, back from health disparities, which I will tell you is where I started, which is very downstream, pull people out of the river area, to the upstream social determinants of health has been a real journey for a lot of researchers, for the CDC, for governments, for foundations, to recognize that if we really want to change health, we better stop looking at just health care. So that's a very important issue, the causes of the problem. Then I can't underscore the importance to understand the cultural context. How did we get here? You know, I often worry that it's, it's innate in our country. There are some fundamental values about capitalism, and if you work hard, you'll get more, that kind of stand in the way of actually creating equal opportunity and making sure that everyone could survive and, uh, and achieve the American dream. So understanding the cultural context throughout the problem, people who are affected by inequities and people who are perpetuating those is very important. We need to know who can make a difference. What are the levers we can push? 
and always know that someone has got there before you. We already heard that this morning, right? So who's working in this now and who are the players and where are the gaps and where can we invest? So that's phase one. Phase two is building awareness, and that's using information to kind of raise the sense of urgency around the issue. So you have to actually assess that first. So I, I, Robert Woods Johnson is here. You know, it's fascinating. We took um, your zip code is more important than your genetic code into rural Colorado. It fell flat. People hated that because there was a sense of unempoweredness. Mm -hmm. I can't change my zip code. That's the post office. And so it was just, <laughs> it, was so, it, it was so interesting. And as you talked about it, and you said, well, do you think everyone has the same choice uh, of being able to live healthy and they, because of where they live? Oh yeah, we get that. But it was just amazing. And so for me to take health equity into Sterling, so this room knows what I mean. Well, I think you know what I mean when I say health equity. But Sterling, Colorado, if I say Colorado Trust is trying to achieve health equity, they say, oh, that's great. What's health equity? And so even the basic phrases in the language, we need to know where that is. We need to understand personal values. And so what we know in Colorado is personal choice is important. It really is. It's your own fault that you got to where you are. Uh, but opportunity, and it's funny because fairness plays a little bit better than equal, at least in rural Colorado, and that's okay. So <clears throat> personal values, and then where do people get their information? So the way public will building says is that we can't change your personal values. I can't convince a Republican that I'm right, and God knows I've tried. Right? They, where values are, are at a different level. And so public will building says let's recognize those values and connect our issue to it. So that we don't change your values, we change your attitudes. So then we build and test messages and then convey it. And public will building says there's traditional communications as we usually think about it, but there's also advocacy and there's grassroots outreach. So you kind of take social marketing and grassroots outreach and movement building and stick them together and that's public will building. The next phase is sharing information. This is where IOM can really help. What are the things we can do? And look, they're at multiple levels. So we heard individual commitment isn't important, but boy, you know, I'm here because you guys changed me because of my personal efforts to want to achieve health equity. And then there's a community. And so we're actually trying to say, what's that next group? And is it a, is it a place-based community? Is it a community of other experts? It, it, these are important issues. And then institutional efforts, our politicians, our healthcare systems, our foundations. How can we engage them to say, what levers can you push on to say how we could make a change? This is the most important phase. Maybe the hardest one, it's where we've created awareness, you know what the problem is, we've talked about solutions, and now we need to shift you into taking action. Mobilize you and your organizations, make this your cause, build those new champions. Sometimes they're leaders, sometimes they're champions, sometimes though they're the same people. Create aspirational community expectations. We should, it, it, it's our fundamental need to have health equity. It needs to be part of my community. And then, unfortunately, it's never good enough to do good things. You have to show you're doing good things. And we heard a little bit that morning. We have to say, we're in a movement, and it's working. And so illuminate it and let people see it and publicize it. And finally, there's evaluation. We need to link strategies. We need to figure out what worked, what didn't work, what messages fell short, make adjustments. So in the, in the Colorado Trust's Building Public Will to Achieve Access to Health, there are kind of two messages. One was that your health care is too important to leave up to others because, you know, no one wanted to talk about politics. That one was actually very effective. The other one was you should be able to get the health care you need when and where you need it. And that one resonated with patients, but not with the healthcare systems, who says, I can't afford to build McMedicine. So learning from that and building new messages going forward. Um, I gotta sum up, I, I couldn't talk about uh, us without talking about the Colorado Trust. And you know, if you're a foundation, you have a theory of change, so this is our theory of change. 
The blood has been shed over this diagram. <laughs> Those of you who do this work, you know what I mean. But we're investing in policy and advocacy, so that's where public will building lives, to try to change upstream issues. We base it on data information. If you know me, you know I'm an evidence-based guy. I can't help myself. It's insufficient, but it's a good stake in the ground to work from. And then we're really excited about community-based participatory grant making, which you may find, so I think I've heard that before in research. Mm -hmm. But the issue really is that I am not smart enough to do this, but the communities are. And if we can create authentic partnerships based on building public will, we can kind of create a movement in health equity moving forward. So we move forward to our new vision that all Coloradans have fair and equal opportunities to lead healthy, productive lives regardless of race, ethnicity, income, or where we live. And that's where we're at today. I'm going to leave you with one last framework. And this goes, you guys, I hope you've seen this, right? This is Bill Moyer, press secretary for Johnson. This is from 1967. It's fascinating because I can see all the elements in it. I only bring it up for one reason. I see, I think we're in the three to four range. We're, we have ripe conditions and we're starting to take off. But I, I leave you with this slide because stage five is a little bit of a warning. And I want to warn you against movement fatigue and a feeling that we're just not getting there. Because Moyer says, it's ironic because you start to feel that just when it starts working. And I'm telling you, we're about to take off. Don't get discouraged because it's just about to start working. So thanks for having me. Thanks, Ned. And hopefully we'll uh, take your advice and not have fatigue during our conversation the next couple of days, and certainly not leaving here and, and moving forward. Our last speaker today is Ray Baxter, Senior Vice President for Community Benefit Research and Health Policy at Kaiser Permanente. He's president of the Kaiser Foundation International, Kaiser Foundation Health Plan, and a member of the Roundtable on Population Health. Ray? <laughs>